Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and I'm finally, finally getting to this tutorial, and that is the one where our action star gets shot and the blood shoots onto the tree. Now, <laughs> believe it or not, he didn't really get shot. Um, we've added this blood, and we've added this uh, blood spatter from our Action Movie Essentials collection. But I will say that the spatter for this particular tutorial, I've actually taken from my Riot Gear DVD. On that DVD is a bunch of spatter images. And these images are matted already. And basically, using a little color correction, I was able to turn them into blood. Now, Action Movie Essentials include some blood elements, but hey, Riot Gear's also got some great elements, so I want to just incorporate those for this tutorial. So what I have here is our action star pretending to get shot, and what we need to do is add the blood. So, like I said, I went into the Riot Gear collection and brought in the splatter images. You can choose from uh, any one of these 22 or choose number 2 and number 4, like I have already done. So now we need to turn these into blood. Now the blood from the Action Movie Essentials DVD can just be dropped into your composition. But since we're going to be using the splatter images from Riot Gear, let's go ahead and turn them into blood. I'm going to choose Effect, Channel, Set Matte. And what this is going to do is look at the luminance channel. So if we change it to luminance and use the luminance as its matte, basically turning the black transparent. We can then copy this, paste it to our other layer, and it too will be keyed out. Pretty simple. Then we can go to Effect, Generate, Fill. And you can change it to any color blood that you want. We'll just make it a little darker. And I'll copy the fill and paste it to the other layer. So, so far, so good. We've created the blood, and now we need to position it into the background here. So let's just kind of Zoom in here, and uh, now to make this blood look a little bit more realistic, let's change the transfer mode to classic color burn. And you see it kind of blends with the divots of the tree and looks a little bit more realistic. Also at this point, you may want to play around with the color to compensate for the fact that it does darken a little bit because of the way the transfer mode blends with the background. But overall, this looks pretty good. And then let's time up the blood. Maybe hits the blood hits about right here, so we'll time these layers up so that nothing and then the blood spatters. Now, this looks pretty good, but obviously our blood is floating and also it's on top of our footage. Not quite as good looking as this. So what we need to do is motion track our background layer so that we can link our blood to it. Now, the first thing I want to do is create a new null object. And the null object is going to be the placeholder for our tracking data. So I'm going to double click on our footage, choose Window, Tracker Controls, and get some room here. Then I'm going to choose Track Motion. I'm also going to track the rotation, and it's going to create two points. And based on the position of these two points, it's going to create a rotation value as well. So what we need to do is position these on two points that are going to be easily tracked. For example, this little cut. Now the good thing about this point is that one, it's contrasted, two, our character doesn't cross over it, and three, it pretty much stays in the frame the entire time. So we'll use it as track point number one. Then for track point number two, we'll go and use a couple of these light spots from the background. Okay, then we'll click on the track forward button. And as you can see, the tracking data has been calculated. Now what I want to do is edit the target so that my motion tracking data applies itself to that null object we created. Then choose OK. Then choose Apply. It's going to ask you to apply the dimensions to X and Y. We'll choose OK. And now back in our composition, you'll see that our null object now has keyframes and is locked to that back layer. So all you need to do now 
is take our two blood layers, parent them to the null object. Okay, so now that looks pretty good, except for the fact that the blood is still on top. But at least we're getting somewhere. So let me clean up my workspace here. Okay, so what we want to do now is make our footage of our Indiana Jones character appear to be on top of our blood. So to do that, we're going to take our footage, choose Edit, Duplicate, put it on top. So what we're going to do is take the pen tool and draw a mask around our action star using as few points as possible. And mainly this just has to be around the side that overlaps where our blood is. So something like this. So now for this one frame, everything is working good. However, he moves across the shot. So to fix this, we need to animate this mask. So if we pull down the mask properties, set a keyframe for the mask shape, and more or less you need to go frame by frame and reanimate this mask for the entire bit of the animation. So luckily it's not a very long shot but you can imagine this uh, could take some time otherwise. One tip also while rotoing is you may want to turn the mask to none so that you can actually see everything while you're working. If you know how to roto already, you will know that the best way to do it is to do parts of the body um, at once. So this is the original comp I did where the hat, the face, and the shoulder are sort of like separate, um, separate masks that I animated. Um, but I got lazy and just thought I'd do it in one. Anyway, basically go frame by frame or every couple of frames and animate this mask. Okay then, once you're done animating the mask, it's pretty good. Then you want to change the mask to add again. So now it's basically taking itself and putting it over top of the entire composition. And now we have something like this. And because he goes over top the blood, our minds automatically perceive that that is in the background. And mission accomplished. <laughs> Almost. What we want to do is take the mask and feather it a few pixels so that the edge is uh, pretty smooth there. Then in the Action Movie Essentials Blood Burst category, we can take Blood Burst number 8 and drag it out to our comp and just make it look like you get shot in the shoulder there. Maybe we'll just move, uh, move these elements over. And likewise, let's color correct this. Color correction, hue and saturation, desaturated just a little bit and bring the lightness down so it matches our uh, our blood. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, another thing to enhance this effect is in the blood. Well, first of all, you can line this blood up now and because we've set up these masks, you can pretty much move it around to wherever you need. But once it's in place, then what we want to do is animate these blood bursts on. So if we take the first layer, create a circular mask around pretty much the hole, and if you hit M, MM, bring up the mask properties, and we have the expansion here. So what we can do is animate the mask expansion from zero, forward a couple of frames, to all the way expanded so that when the blood hits it sort of spatters on and we can uh, feather the edges of this a little bit make, maybe make it look like motion blur then you can copy the mask control C paste it to the other blood layer and 
all the blood spatters on. Just in time, too. Let's go and play this back. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and uh, just time up the animation so that uh, fits your uh, fits your needs, and uh, you're in good shape. Now, if we haven't plugged enough of Video Copilot products, I'm going to plug one more. Create a new adjustment layer. Install your Filmmagic Pro that you bought from VideoCopilot.net. Grab the green easy preset. Drop it into the adjustment layer. Okay, well I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, I know one question I get a lot too, which is a little complicated for a tutorial, but it's how we did the old rock coming down on our friend. And basically, in 3D Studio Max, I modeled this ball. It was very complicated. It was a, uh, what do they call that? Oh yeah, a sphere with a noise map on it and a nice rock looking texture. Some good lighting, if I uh, do say so myself. Nice bright one up on top. Little ambient coming over here. And using Reactor to simulate the bounce and sort of the roll that happens subsequent. I was able to composite it into the scene here. And I also added just a little shadow and some blood elements from the Action Movie Essentials collection as well as a ricochet to simulate the dust kind of shooting up. So here's sort of a uh, preliminary composite here. We also added some camera shake just like you've seen in the earthquake tutorial. And the final composite looks something like this. So we've also tinted the dust to look like dirt. And we've added a nice blood element. Pretty rough. Although I will say that uh, Indiana Jones is a fantastic movie. Harrison Ford is probably my favorite actor. In fact, I just bought a Raiders of the Lost Ark poster off of eBay. It's got George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, um, John Williams. Everyone signed that poster. I think they did. The guy told me they did. And hey, as long as I think they did, that's the only thing that's important. Okay, uh, what was this tutorial about? Oh, yeah. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, my name's Andrew Kramer, and of course, you can visit me at creativecow.net in the After Effects forum, or come visit my website, www.videocopilot.net. We got some tutorials, great products, Riot Gear, Action Movie Essentials, a bunch of other stuff too. So come check it out. We'll see you next.